Hello there. This is Business Connect. My name is Brian Oji, and I'm here with my co-host, Charles Odi. Charles, how are you doing today? Very well, Brian. Welcome to the Bowtie Club. Oh, thank you. I think I rock it better than you, though. Well, uh, I'll, let, I'll let our guests be the judge of that. Okay, maybe we'll put up a trivia or something. Who rocked it better, Brian or Charles? Anyway, on today's edition of Business Connect, it's all about starting out. And to build anything that is going to be great, you will have to first start. Whether you start small or you start big, it's important that you start. Joining us on the show today is a remarkable entrepreneur with an inspiring startup story. She started a business with very little capital, and today she has grown it to a business that can be reckoned with even beyond the shores of our home country. We're talking with the managing director and CEO of Hesse Designs. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, and I'll introduce her properly. There is a life full of unlimited possibilities. There is a solution to every situation you may be going through. Yes, your life can be beautiful. You can experience complete transformation in every area of your life. Love World Plus Response Center is here to show you how. Contact us through our various platforms for prayers, counseling, inquiry, and contributions. Call the numbers now showing on your screen. Send an email to info at lovewellplus.org or chat live with us at real time. Log on to www.lovewellplus.org. God bless you. Welcome back. My guest today is one of our generation's bright lights. She runs Hesse Designs. Hesse Designs is a fashion company that operates from the heart of Lagos in Nigeria, very famous for making super creative Ankara apparels and ornaments. She is also an award winner and has won the British Council Enterprise Challenge, the Google Africa Connected Awards, and was the finalist at the Tony Elumelu Prize in Business at the Future Awards in 2014. Hesse, Odete. You are welcome to Business Connect. Thank you very much. Your introduction is like a mouthful. You've done so much. <laughs> You're so young. Thank you very much. I'm Fantastic. glad to be here today. All right. Now, for those who are wondering what we've got here, Charles Motel. I mean, so it looks like a marketplace, like, <laughs> like a stand. These actually are SA's products. Mm -hmm. SA designs Ankara bags, Ankara shoes, Ankara iPad cases, Ankara wallets. By Ankara, I mean the fabric. So it's called Ankara in... In, in Nigeria, you know, so these are African prints. So she's she's done a lot of these things, and you, and you know that the Richard Branson's third 30th anniversary sneakers yes, was UK designed by her. The UK billionaire was designed by her. Whoa, excellent. You know? So now these are all. I've never seen Ankara being used to make sneakers like that. Sneakers <laughs> <laughs> like like those you know? ones. Wow, <laughs> this this is this is really creative. I see it's. It's beautiful what you're doing with um, African prints. Thank you. And the creativity of it, I know, is one of the things that really attract people to your brand. And little wonder we keep reading out award after award after award. And we just stopped at 2014. Who knows what more we're going to be saying by December of 2015. But I want to begin with the cross of the matter. How did you start all this? What is the genesis of what is today Hesse Designs? Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to be, to be here. Um, SA Designs was born in 2012. I just finished school, I just finished NYC. I came back, I served in the North, so I just came back to Lagos after NYC. And okay, way back, I knew I wanted to do something in fashion. I knew somehow it could be modeling, although I would make a terrible model, <laughs> but I knew I wanted to do something in fashion. Mm -hmm. So. I started off with clothing. I did a runway thing. It didn't work out fine because so many people liked the outfits, but there was too much complications on sizing and all that. And as a young, inexperienced person, I needed something to start with. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot easier, something I can cope with. So I started making accessories. I learned mostly using the internet. And after I felt, OK, I could move, I started looking for who would actually produce these bags to make it nicer. I can't produce perfectly well from what I learned on the internet. So I went to the market in search of a bag maker. And luckily, 
by grace, I found one who was willing to work with me. And since then, we've been producing together and working together. So, so hold on, when you say you, you, you started out on, on the, the internet, internet. <coughs> so how, how does that go? So you learned how to make this on the internet? Yes, things? watching lots of videos, different videos on how to make it, practice with what I have at hand, make it, make errors and everything. But it wasn't perfect for international standard, yes. which I was projecting for. Yes. I know now, you know, I ship products abroad. Yes. It wasn't up to that standard. Yes. And I wanted it to be good. I didn't just want to start making things that mm -hmm. people would complain after. So I had to look for someone who was more experienced in the field to help me grow as a person and also help me produce while I work on myself and produce my things. So ever before you started watching the YouTube videos, um, did you have sewing skills? Was no, did your parents I didn't have, have anything. Sewing I skills? didn't study anything relating to fashion in school. You didn't I go to any fashion of skating no, education? No, I didn't do anything relating. I've not, even till now, I've not been to a school. So I've just been learning on the job, learning wow. with my workers. And I've not been to a fashion school That's now. remarkable. You started okay. learning all these things from the internet, watching videos on the internet. Yes. I wonder what skill I would like to go learn. On the internet? internet. <laughs> I've always wanted to be able to paint. On, Seriously? Well, yeah, really. Like, I wanted to just <laughs> get a blank canvas and just... Pain. I'm sure the internet can teach you that. Of, yeah, confusing stuff and say, this is so, there's depth. <laughs> I, know, I know the internet. <laughs> and you sell it for two you, billion naira. And you sell it for two billion naira. Yes. <laughs> I can tell you, all those things that they sell for, they are very, very ugly. They, feel, they look like... You say it's the, ugly, but it's, 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 it's art. It's art. It's art. So I know that the internet can teach you the ABCs, how to join one of those things, but the creativity has to be inborn, right? Yes. So all of these things are your creative designs. Yes. From, from watching uh, YouTube videos and watching videos Yes, then, internet. of course, I had the whole passion and the whole drive <laughs> yeah. for creative things. So I just needed to bring it out. Because you have to, you can't just have it in there and keep it in there. Somehow you have to look for a way to channel it out. So I would say somehow I'm, I was born with it mm -hmm. to an extent, of course. I didn't just go out of the way to something I didn't have a passion for. Yes. I'm indifferent about to learn, so yes. So you're passionate about fashion, but all through secondary school, university, up until after NYSC, there was no single bag There was no produced. single, no. Wow, very remarkable. Okay, let's, let's travel down memory lane right now. Okay. You, you went, at least you had the laptop. You went on the internet. <laughs> you no, the I, had, I actually didn't have a laptop. So you went to a cyber cafe? I go to a cyber cafe to watch the close video. to the house. Yeah, you know, I, you know, this speaks to um, a lot of people out And there. I save lots of things on my flash. Yeah, and, and then you just go. I'll just and, go ahead and, and then it. I'll go back again. Like it, that. It, it, save it, lots it, of it, pictures. It's exciting to me because it speaks Very to a, Very a regular challenge that we hear that, oh, there are no jobs, there are no opportunities, there's no this, there's no that. But you were faced with the same situation. And look what you did with it. Hey, look, look what you did with it. Yes. Very, very. But very how important. did you know, though, that this is what you wanted to do with your life? How did you decide that? Oh, I have this creative energy, but how do you know you're going to channel it into this particular venture? Like I said, somehow you always know, even as a child, you know what you're drawn to. You know you like to do this. Funny enough, I was in science class. One morning, I woke up and said I didn't want to do anything in science, and it was an issue. I had to do guidance and counseling for like two weeks, trying to know. I'm like, I was doing well. I was one of the best in science class. But one morning I woke up like, I don't want to be in science class because I wasn't feeling it. I felt, okay, reading literature books and doing all those artistic things were more of what I wanted to do. So I see myself reading my friends' books, literature books, yeah, and all those. And you found it exciting. I found it exciting, doing more of all those arts-related stuff. But, but, but let's take me to my next question. When you started this, yes. I'm sure it's not like the way it is now. When everybody says, this is Hesse Design, she has this brand, she's done of this. Of course. You first looked funny to people, especially your parents. Mm -hmm. Tell us, how did you manage that part <coughs> of startup? <coughs> especially okay. when you switch from art, from science to art. No, then it was still a bit better. My dad now looked for, okay, what would you read that would make more sense? You know, mm -hmm. then, till now, I don't know, but you know, people don't take people in arts class serious. Okay. They think science class are the smart people. And people in the art are the ones who couldn't make it in science class that decided to go into art. True. 
So it's just a, it's a perception. It's a bad, think. very terrible perception. It's how the people in the art class portray themselves when I was back, when, back in the day. No, they just school. think when art is science not science a serious science science thing. Student. I was an art student. They just think art is so, not as serious so as science. You're doing chemistry, you're doing biology, you're doing physics, serious it's supposed to be calculation. Hard it's hard. Writing. I've, funny enough, I was the best graduating art student from mm -hmm. school. And I'm sure my dad was, okay, fine, she was the best. She, he was proud at that point mm -hmm. also because I had to switch. Then starting the whole business, it was hard, really. I started with 10,000 naira. I just came, from, from, came back from NYC. My little savings from being a copper and which amounted to about ten thousand naira. Which amounted ten thousand naira. <laughs> in dollars that's about sixty dollars. Yes, about sixty dollars. Depends on our depends on what you exchange want to exchange rate. Yeah. yeah. And okay, I already had the idea what I wanted to do and everything. Ten thousand naira was what I used for the materials for the bags, first set of bags. And okay, I, it wasn't even enough. So I had to go to my tailor's place to get pieces of materials I know he wasn't using anymore. Like, okay, this one, is not, your customer may not use it again. Half yard, quarter yard, things like that. And that was what formed my first set of bags. So from your first set of bags. Okay, yes. we're gonna continue with this story okay. in a bit. We're gonna go on a short break. When we come back, she's gonna continue uh, what she's telling us about how she started her business. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Lovo Plus is now on your mobile format and connects you in real time. You can now watch your favorite programs, episodes, live shows, prayer shows, features, live TV, archived videos, and lots more. You can also participate with your comments and contributions from anywhere in the world. Download on any of your mobile devices, whether it's Android or iOS or Windows, the Lovo Plus mobile app now and stay connected. Lovo Plus, totally new. Welcome back. We still have Essie Odeite here, the founder and CEO of Hesse Designs. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how she started and how she was able to navigate the part where her parents say, oh, you've got to do this. And then she thought, oh, this is what I'm passionate about. And how she got initial support from her parents. That's interesting. But tell us, did that support continue even when it looked like, come, are you not going to go and get a job? Are you not going to, come on, you refuse to be not a pharmacist really. now? Yeah. <laughs> OK, um, after school, I was home for, I got a job, funny enough, but that was mainly because I needed to, to please that side. <laughs> so I'm not having, so I was juggling both for a while till I decided I couldn't juggle anymore. I had to resign. And even after resigning, I told them I got a job, another job, and they gave me a break for one month to go relax before I resumed the other job. So the one month was buying time to maybe something miraculous will happen during that one month that would make me win them over completely. Mm -hmm. And nicely, something miraculous happened. That was the wow. period of the Google Africa Connected. Okay. And when the whole video shoot and everything happened where some, a couple of people, white men, came to my house and Popsu was excited and happy. And okay, he knew that his daughter was doing something good at that point that got people like this to yeah. come to the house and recognize what I was doing. So that was like my breaking point. At that point, he knew, okay, I'm you, doing you, something good. Yes, you got them to pay attention. Yes, okay, to so, so let me imagine this. Your dad was just there, you know, thinking, oh, my daughter, she's creative about what she's doing. She likes it, but I want her to get a job, like a every good child. job. A good job, because I can see the future. She can't, you know, things like that. And then for you to, for you to convince them, it was not a question of having long discussions and saying, no, daddy, this is what I want to do. This is what I, you know, a lot of young people find themselves in that situation, having arguments back and forth with the parents. This is what I want to do, this is what I want to do. You just went ahead with your business, grew it to the extent where white people with cameras, like you said, came to us and you thought, hold on. Something, there's something this girl <laughs> is doing. Yeah, yes. that, that's beautiful. So instead of telling, that you this, should. Okay, because definitely they were seeing Science. They knew I was doing something. Mm -hmm. I come home with Ghana must go back. They knew I was doing something, but they just thought it was some hobby or some something, maybe some extra income kind of mm -hmm. thing. So at that point, they knew. Okay, this was serious. This was bigger than she made us believe it mm -hmm. was, and they started believing in it. Yeah, that that was very key. Now let's look at starting out. 
Tell us about your very first customer. How did you get your very first customer? My very first customer was a was my colleague where I was working. He bought a shoe for his girlfriend. <laughs> and I actually convinced him to buy it. I think it was her birthday and we just got talking and it was like I wanted to buy it. So I said, ah, she would, you know this thing is raining. She would like it though. And then I said, no problem. And I made the shoe for him and funny enough, she liked it. And yeah, so that was my first customer. Then after that, I started using blogs. Yeah, okay. And my subsequent customers came from all those blogs. I sent um, different blogs, emails, and my designs, pictures, and stuff like that. They should feature me for free because I didn't even have money to pay any blogger. So most of them were excited. They thought my stuff was really great and they featured. And I always put my contact with every with every um, release, press release. Yes, every press release I send out. So people started ordering through BBM emails and business started. Oh, fantastic! So how else has the technology? that you took advantage of helped to, to expand your business? Well, um, technology helped me in starting up, learning a few things I needed to. Yes. It still helps me in learning because what I've done so far, probably short courses here and there in business, but there's still a whole lot I need to learn about business. Mm -hmm. And since I can't go to maybe study a proper MBA, I still learn using the internet, internet. learn from people's stories, read articles and a lot, things like that. Also, I sell, I have a website where I sell, which is technology. Mm -hmm. People in different countries I've never even heard of. And people communicate with me in real time and you get, I sell to different countries I've never been to. That is technology. Yes. And also, promoting my business has been more of technology than print media and um, others, yes. So, so I, I'm aware that uh, you, you grew your business, you got grants, you yeah. got um, equity, free funds to grow your business. How did you tap in? Because there are a lot of people, a lot of young people watching us now, and then they have these big dreams, but they have link pockets, and they started. How can they take advantage of those kind of grants? Where, where do they go to, to get that kind of exposure or information? I won't say I'm a technology person, but I'm always on the internet. So most of these competitions are on the internet. Most of these grants um, competitions are on the internet. There's no particular sites you can check. But what I did then, I set Google Alerts with keywords, entrepreneurship, Nigeria, keywords like that. that money, entrepreneurship, <laughs> Nigeria, cash, dollars, you get pounds. Funds, competition, keywords like that. that Excellent. Anything that's anything around that thing. I swear, that was what even got the British Council one. Okay. The Google was, I saw it because it was sponsored by, it's a Google competition, so it was on their tab. Okay. So once you're on the internet about to use Google, you see it just on that. Yeah. And funny enough, I didn't even want to apply. I've been seeing it for like a long time. Mm -hmm. And one day I just said, let me even click and see what this thing is about. That was the last day. Wow. It was closing. And I saw a lady that was in Ankara Accessories from Ghana. And I was like, if they can use this lady for their promotional video, that means they're looking for people like me. Yes. yes. You get. So she was my motivation for applying. And I applied, I watched the video, I applied, and in, after two weeks, they called me, and from there, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> there are so many competitions. The British Council one was an alert, Google alert. Wow. That actually got me that one. It was a press release on, I can't remember the newspaper. They had a press release to launch the competition, mm -hmm. and the Google alert picked it, because those keywords were, were there. in the press release. So my Google alert picked it, and I checked, and I read through, oh, nice, I could apply for this. And I also know that you, that you train people now. You're, give, you're trying to give back to society, so you, you have an empowerment center. Tell us about the empowerment center. Okay, I train women, specifically women, because if you train a woman, you've trained the whole you nation. Trained the, yeah. You've trained, because you trained she would, the whole earth. She will, uh, the whole earth. Yeah. She will take care of her kids. She will take care of her husband. She will take care of her neighbor. She'll her neighbors, everybody. So, I focus on just women. And so far, we've done over 50 people, 50 wow. women. We train them on how to make these bags, accessories, shoes, things like that. Some of them go out to start their own businesses, and some of them we outsource our productions to, to them, them, and then to we encourage. collect to encourage them to still stay in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because some of them, we lost some in the process of some way to get jobs, proper jobs, yes. and some are still in business, and 
some still produce for us and we sell to our own customers. Wow. This company itself started in 2012. <laughs> Yes, unofficially in 2012. It was okay. registered in 2013, 2013. Okay. So when did you start operations? It was 12, 12, okay, when I made my first set of bags, November 2012. So that's no, when I started. November 2012. So between November 2012 and now, all this has happened? Yes, all this. Why? Are you, is it because you are so special? What well, do you attribute it to? Well, there's always the grace factor in everything. So there's okay. always the God factor in everything. Get, then also, I think determination. I remember one time my colleague in the office called me a guerrilla marketer mm -hmm. when I was trying to promote my bags. I got several blogs, over a hundred of them. And some don't even respond, but I was still sending it. Because I know even if it's one person that picks up the gist, one person that picks it up, it's something for me. Yes. And then when I got the good news from one, I was excited and I'm like, this is the motivation to do more. Mm -hmm. I had this thing that, okay, if you send to a hundred people and 10 people get back to you, 10 is huge. <laughs> so if you send to 1,000 people, 10%, you know the 10%? Yes, the 10% formula. Formula, yes. So I, the more people I send to, the more people that will pick up, mm -hmm. the more customers I'll get and all that. So mm -hmm. I was determined to see it through. I needed to prove to people that I was working, like my parents, for instance. Yes. And I told myself I didn't really want to work for anybody for more than five years, although I broke that um, record. I broke my own record. Own I didn't work up to five record. years. My own personal record, which was a good. So I, at a point, I needed to prove that this was working. So which each, as since like okay, July 2013, 2012, okay. I had a show with Ibuka Awashika. 2013. 2013. Yeah. Yes, 2013. Yeah. And that was just my the first serious campaign I ever did on the internet, and. Two days later, someone called me. Mm -hmm. Africa Magic called me through that. Mm -hmm. So with each big thing that happened, I knew it was it, working. Was I was Yes. So I was motivated to do more. And hold on. These guys put up your story for free. Did yes, you pay for them? free. I didn't pay them. Wow. So I it was just the sheer grit to just, just keep sending exactly. it and sending so it and sending it. Even when they were responding. Even yes. when they were. So saying. when a whole Africa magic, I'm like, <laughs> What? So I need to double on whatever I'm doing. And now here you're on Business Connect. Yes. On Business Connect. Doesn't talking to, better than this. Talking yes. to <laughs> the rest of the world. Okay, so I also know, because we're talking, because you're my, you my good friend now. I also <laughs> know that you, you designed the sneakers for the UK billionaire's 30th anniversary. That's Virgin, Virgin Records or Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic. And you, you wine and dined with the UK billionaire all because you started to do this. Yes. And then he, he, he he's, he's That's 30th Richard Branson, right? Just, Richard just, Branson, yeah. Richard Branson. Yeah. Yeah. And then his 30th anniversary stickers, you designed it. Yes. And then he wore it, and then he had some of his staff wear it as well. And then we were getting orders from that. Do you want to share with us, because I, I, you, went for, you went to the Richard Branson Entrepreneurship Center. Do you want to share with us some of the things that you took out from that? Okay. That was through the British Council competition was part of the prize was a mentoring session with Richard Branson, which we had in the UK in July, July 2014. And after that, I made him a sneakers. I got his size and- You made his sneakers like that? Yes, I just thought, okay, he would just, he's a rich man, he's a billionaire. He has received way better gifts. He can even buy a billion of it. He would just say, oh, nice, mm -hmm. and just, keep it over and trade or uh, give his house boy or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he was excited and we went back after the whole dinner we had, we went back to change. He went back to change for the official party in the evening. And he came back wearing the sneakers. Wow. And I'm like, ah. like I was excited because someone like that you don't expect him to he would have just come back with a normal show. I yeah. would feel bad. Mm -hmm. At least he has taken pictures with me. Yes. And, it, and I will, that was okay for mm -hmm. me. But then he came back. He was excited. He kept dragging me everywhere. A party of celebrities we watch on TV. American celebrities we watch on TV. Yes. And he kept dragging and introducing, okay, this is this person. She, she's from Nigeria. She made my sneakers. And he kept taking me everywhere. And I don't know if you guys know Vivian Westwood. Yes, I think Vivian Westwood. Top fashion designers. Yes. And I had him, I talked to her, we talked and everything. He introduced me to her. And then at the end of the entire show, he brought me up on stage in the whole party. That was like huge, I almost fainted. <laughs> so it's not just, he wasn't just excited about sneakers. Yeah. He was proud, he told them my story and mm -hmm. it was like 
So it's not something I can get over in a while. You know what? You know I'm what? going to give you the opportunity right now. Pass me the sticker. <coughs> you're, going, you're, going, you're going to have a very rich and influential man. With I don't us. understand. <laughs> are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> come, come, give me. I don't give need me. your picture. But you need to come. You need okay. to. How are you going to come? Are you going to come to? I don't think the cameras can pick no, you. No, no. I, I mean, so I'm going to tell your story, and I'm putting you on this platform, okay. and I'm giving you another opportunity. Okay. You're introducing like, her to celebrities. Like you. Like you. Come. What's your name? You are a great girl. <laughs> okay. but, 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 but key to that as it's putting on the shoe was the fact that you thought to yourself that I want to do this for Richard Branson. It wasn't as if you were told, oh, go do it. No, me. no, no. You, I, I, I wanted to, okay, I, it's like every designer's dream. Hmm. To design to, for To sorry. design for someone like that, yes. you get. And so I was like, okay, it. what can I do? What can I take with me? I'm meeting, I may not have that kind of opportunity again. Yes. I'm meeting a billionaire, what can I take with me as a gift for him? And then I took permission, of course. I asked them if I can do this. And they said, go. They were excited, like, go ahead. And then I made the sneakers, and he loved it, and it was a dream come true. OK. How do you like me now? And that was actually my second anniversary. My second anniversary. <laughs> oh, it coincided, it coincided yes. with your second anniversary. And he had this plug, SAS2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. How old are you be this year? Three years. SAS3. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you, oh you, need, you need to get like an SA3. SA3. Oh, but this is really nice. It's very nice. Really nice. Brian, how do you like this? I think I, I think it's really nice. You know? Um, I like the fact that you wore it with a bow tie. Like, it really works. <laughs> I can wear this for board meetings, you know? I'm, I'm trying to be African. It, it's trendy. Like, it takes... It, it's surprising. I was just talking <laughs> to people about the element of surprise. You're the fashion person. You tell us about the element of surprise in a man's outfit or a woman's outfit. This, this evokes the element of surprise, yes, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. I think your leg will be here for the rest of the show. Yes, it should be. Just put it right so here. So I'm introducing you to the world. This is SA Design Sneakers. She's okay. going to be three years old this year. And the version is going to be how old this year? 900 years old. <laughs> yes. we're, we're old like that. Yeah, very old, very old. Yeah, so so that's it. That's, that's this is this these are remarkable products and this is an inspiring story. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what you're doing with the internet. She's, you just heard SA Design. She started her business by watching videos from the internet. She started with 10,000 naira. She didn't even own a laptop. She went out to look for opportunities to use the internet. So she saw the internet, downloaded pictures, went home, tried these things, started her business. Against all odds, she was persistent. She put in a lot of hard work. Come on. Beautiful story. Beautiful Very story. Finally, SA, the business is good. You're three this year. Where do you see yourself in the next five years when you're eight? Okay, we're hoping to diversify. Okay. First of all, we would have empowered more women, of course. Diversify into other good, other things, leather bags, which we've started in tiny. We've started. I mean, small steps. Small steps, footprints. yes. Good. To try other markets and see what works for us. Okay. So in five years, we'll be huge. I We're taking imagine. over this nation. I can imagine. Over, you're taking over Africa. Yes. Okay, so what do you have to say to entrepreneurs? Because we have a lot of entrepreneurs who watch us week in, week out. What do you have to say with that person with a big dream and a small pocket? Okay, I don't think you should wait till you have a big pocket, as big as your dream. Okay. Because if you don't start, probably one day you see your idea, someone has taken over it. So I think you should start with what you have. Start with... No matter how little, I'm sure it can go a long way if you actually start. And then you will get funds one way or the other. You get someone who believes in your dream, who's ready to take it from where you started it from. So start with what you have. Don't wait till you have something serious or something huge to work with. Just start with what you have, and God will take care of every other thing. All right, so start with what you have, and God's going to take care of every other thing. Thank you so much, Essay, of coming on the thank show. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much thank for you, coming you. on the show. It's, thank you. It's been a delight having you here. It's so much. Look at this. This is so creative. Very, very, very. This nice. is so creative. So how much does this cost in dollars? I'm not telling you. <laughs> so, so I want to yeah, buy it. it depends on who wants to buy it. Hey, you, depends you, you on who guys, wants you guys to are going to do that offset. For now, <laughs> for now I, I want to <laughs> round off now for today. We, 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 we're, we're out of time. So 
thank you so much, Essie, for coming on the show. Thank Remember, you, very much for you, me. you can watch this particular edition of the show and previous editions on www.lovewarplus.org as well as on our dedicated website, www.businessconnectonline.com. Let us interact also on UCOS. UCOS community for the show is www.ucos.com slash groups slash business connect. We will be very thrilled to hear from you. And you can ask any of our guests any question you have, and I'm sure they will be right there to answer you. Thank you very much. Until we see you again next week, keep winning. <music>